Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to take a look at a summary of volumes. So far, we've talked about the disc method, the washer method, and the shell method for finding volumes. We've talked about vertical rectangles, we've talked about horizontal representative rectangles. And it's all very confusing and I see students mixing up the method with the type of rectangle they use. So I wanna to try to summarize it and give you some guidelines to deciding what method you're gonna use. First of all, determine whether you're going to be working with vertical or horizontal rectangles. If you choose vertical rectangles, it means everything will be in terms of X. Your functions will be in terms of X and your limits on your integral will be the x values. If you're using vertical rectangles, you're gonna have three options as to what method or formula to use. To know which method, you determine whether your vertical rectangle is perpendicular or parallel to the axis of revolution. If it is perpendicular, so in other words, it's rotating around the x-axis, then your two options are disc or washer, depending on whether there's a hole in the middle or not. And really that is determined by whether the area is bounded by the x-axis or not. If it's bounded by the x-axis, it's a disc. If not, you're using a washer. If your vertical rectangle is parallel to the axis of rotation, so in other words, the y-axis, then you're using the shell method. But notice in all of them, Everything's in terms of x, the limits, as well as the functions. Similarly, if you decide to use horizontal representative rectangles, then these are your three options for formulas. Everything is in terms of y with horizontal rectangles. The functions will be functions of y, not x, and the limits on your integrals will be y values. So with horizontal rectangles, you're going to use the disc and washer method if your horizontal rectangle is perpendicular to your axis of revolution. So in other words, if your horizontal rectangle is rotating around the y-axis, then you're using the disc or the washer method. The disc method would work if the area is bounded by the y-axis and it's rotating around the y-axis. If it's not bounded by the y-axis, means there's a hole in the middle, so it'll be the washer method. If on the other hand, your horizontal rectangles are parallel to the axes of rotation, in other words, they're rotating around the x-axis, then you're using the shell method. But in all of these, you'll notice the function is in terms of y and the limit values are y values. If you're working with an area that's rotating around a line other than the x-axis or the y-axis, then you will need to choose the rectangle that's parallel to the line it's rotating around and use the shell method. Another piece of advice is always choose the easiest method. That might not be possible if your instructions tell you to use a certain method. They might ask you to do a volume using the washer as well as the shell method, but if the choice is yours, try to think of what's easiest. For example, if I had a question like this and I was asked to rotate this around the x-axis, the easiest method is to choose disc because this is bounded by the x-axis, it's rotating around the x-axis, so I would use a vertical rectangle, there's no hole in the middle, so disc method's going to be the easiest. Is it possible to use horizontal rectangles? Absolutely. But if you use horizontal, which are parallel to the x-axis, you're then going to need to use shell method. So pick what you feel is the easiest for the question and then determine whether that rectangle is perpendicular or parallel to the axis of rotation. If it's perpendicular, it has to be washer or disc. If it's parallel, it has to be shell. If you can keep that straight, then hopefully you won't have too many problems doing volumes. 
As always, practice as much as you can. I think the easiest part of doing volumes is the actual integration. The toughest part is drawing the graphs, figuring out whether you're using vertical or horizontal rectangles, then figuring out what formula you're gonna use, whether you're using disc or washer or shell, and then setting up your integral. Once that integral is set up, it's usually fairly easy to do the actual integral. Anyway, good luck with, with volumes. Uh, you will find that they get easier the more practice you get and, and if you can recognize the patterns I've been talking about. The next application of integration that we're going to do is centroids. So when you're ready, take a look.